Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Mixed Methods Research. Today, we're going to be talking about transformative sequential design. My name is Evan Ortlieb, and let's go ahead and get started. So first off, let's think about what is the construct of this design in general. And designs are transformative in this sense in that they offer opportunities for reconfiguring the dialogue, changing about what's talked about across ideological differences and thus have the potential to restructure the evaluation context. And diverse methods most importantly serve to include a broader set of interests in the resulting knowledge claims and overall to strengthen the likely effectiveness of action solutions. The premise of this is to transform what is done. And so that could be in a social setting, that could be in an economic setting, a cultural one. It really depends upon the context. So now let's go into what are the patterns that guide these transformative sequential designs. If we think about the first one, we have to think from an axiological standpoint about what is valued within this particular context with respect to uh, cultural norms, uh, human rights, social justice, et cetera, et cetera. Secondly, from an ontological standpoint, what exists or how do we know what actually exists within social, cultural, economic, and political context? And that's typically what is valued in those particular areas. Third, the epistemology or what is knowledge and how do we identify that, whether that be through realism or relativism, rationalism, et cetera. And finally, the, methodolo the methodology that guides this particular study, what is that system? Is it quantitative, is it qualitative, or is it mixed methods? And overall, the elements of the design in this particular transformative sequential design are as follows. There's two distinct phases of data collection, one following the other, AKA sequential in nature. And you have either the quant or the qual can be used first. And whichever one that's going to be used first is going to take priority and you're going to label it with the capital letters, in this case, quantitative or qualitative, whatever, whatever works for your particular study. Finally, the integration actually occurs at the end during the interpretation phase. And so you're not going to actually integrate the qual with the quant until the very end. And those sort of constructs are guided by a theoretical perspective. So in this particular study, the theory or the theoretical perspective actually guides the entire data collection, data analysis, and so on through a particular theoretical lens. And that methods are selected to best serve that particular theoretical perspective, which is different from other designs where the methods uh, serve as the backbone and you uh, select your theoretical framework according to that particular set of methods. So why is it necessary to think about the theory that drives this research? Well, first off, we have to remember that according to Cresswell, all research is theoretically driven. And that goes in two different areas. Number one, from an informal lens where you have a, a set of assumptions that we make as researchers, and we also have personal perspectives that are informed from our own histories, experiences, cultures, gender, class, et cetera, et cetera. And then from a more formal lens, we have other perspectives that are determined by our gender, our culture, our lifestyle orientation, and even other critical theory perspectives that, um, that, that are sort of uh, found in the extant literature and connected to the field of study that we're examining. So what is the purpose of this design? Well, first and foremost, it's to advocate for change. And I think many of us are passionate about this particular um, a sort of social revelation, social movement, and we want our research to actually lead to a uh, change, to be the impetus, um, at, you know, to serve as a change agent in that process. And so the transformative element of this particular design is going to be experienced by the participants either during the study as they participate in the research itself 
or after the study as the research spawns changes in action, policy, or even ideology. Some common topics that are typically uh, examined uh, include ethnicities, issues about race, gender, um, feminist scholarship, postmodernism, social justice, or even equity and inclusivity. And something that we have to remember is that you can either have an explicit um, uh, explicitly stated theoretical lens, or it can be implicit, but either way it's going to guide the overall construct and framework of your study. Uh, Green recommends that you use an explicit one, but it really depends upon your particular purpose and what you think would be best. Here's an example of transformative sequential design. If we were investigating curricular programs that disenfranchise non-native English speakers in an urban school district, right? So the issue is inequity. And how are we going to tackle this? First, we're going to collect survey data and analyze that through a quantitative means. Remember, see all caps and quantitative here. And we might look at correlations between variables or a factor analysis or even regression, trying to see the um, ability with which to predict change. And we're going to follow up with qualitative case studies using, <clears throat> um, uh, using different perspectives from teachers, coaches, and administrators in this district to examine their thoughts on inequities within this particular school district with respect to the curricula. And again, the researcher is most interested in bringing about change to this curricula and in using research as evidence for that needed change and to advocate for that change. And so, again, this, this, this um, theoretical perspective is one of social justice, is one of inequity. And so they're further examining this in hopes of bringing about positive change for this particular group. Some components that we need to consider in this overall design. The first is the purpose. And again, that purpose is to promote a particular issue. And then that issue creates a personal, social, institutional, or organizational impact from that research. The participants, who will it be that we will study and further examine? Third, how will we proceed with data collection, both quantitatively and qualitatively? And we need to remember that we have to be sensitive to this particular population and never try to further marginalize this group. And lastly, the conclusion and how we go about the integration process at the end of the interpretation phase. Finally, let's go over the strengths and relative challenges of this transformative sequential design. Again, we are trying to give voice to diverse perspectives using this overall strategy. We can better advocate for the participants who we're studying and we can better understand a phenomena or process that's changing through this design. Some inherent limitations or challenges include having a minimal amount of literature that exists as of today using this particular method. Secondly, we must con conduct research in culturally sensitive ways, and it's not always possible to do so. Data must be transformed so that it can be integrated again at a later phase. And at times you have unequal amounts of evidence, meaning that you may have more quantitative than qualitative or vice versa. And that may present challenges or disadvantages when interpreting those results. Again, this is a primer on transformative sequential design and mixed methods research. I hope that you will join us for other talks soon. Again, my name is Evan Ordlieb and I wish you all the best. Take care.